California is taking a giant leap forward when it comes to solar power. The world's two largest solar energy plants are being built here in Southern California, and they're using a technology that you've never seen before. As Roger Cooper tells us, with climate change on the horizon, we can use all the solar power we can get. It will be like 10,000 eyes following the sun across the sky, 10,000 giant mirrors tracking the sun's course, then concentrating its rays into a white-hot focal point. Harnessing the power of a star 93 million miles away, all to make electricity on Earth. It will be the largest solar power plant in the world, and it will be built here in California, 70 miles northeast of Los Angeles, on 7,000 acres near Bartstow. Well, first of all, it's, it's sustainable, so you don't have to worry about depleting the resource. We get free fuel from the sky, the sun, basically. It will be built by a company called Sterling Energy Systems, and come online in about a year and a half in an era of disturbing climate change and concern about our dependence on fossil fuels. Bruce Osborne is Sterling CEO. There are no emissions, there is no pollution, no CO2 greenhouse gases that people worry about for uh, global warming, those types of things, and no contaminants of any sort. So it's very uh, friendly from an environmental standpoint. It also comes at just the right time for one of Southern California's major utilities, Southern California Edison. Edison and all California utilities are under a state mandate. By 2010, they must be getting 20% of their energy from renewable sources. So Edison has agreed to buy all the power generated by this solar plant for the next two decades. Pedro Pizarro is Edison's senior vice president for power procurement. We've agreed to buy the power for 20 years. We've agreed, agreed to buy the full output of the plant for 20 years. The guarantee makes it possible for Sterling to get the loans needed to build the plant. And the solar power source will help Edison reach its 20% goal. In 2005, we had over 17% of our portfolio from renewables. That is more than uh, any other utility in the country. In fact, Southern California Edison buys more renewable power than any other state in the country. Uh, we buy about a sixth of the renewable energy that is produced in the United States. Still, solar power has been tried before and has proven to be too expensive or didn't produce enough power. So what's different about this project? Enter the Sterling engine, a technology that could revolutionize the industry. It's a nearly two century old uh, concept that is now ready for prime time. Uh, back in the late 1800s, a Scottish minister, Dr. Robert Sterling, originally came up with the concept as an alternative for steam engines. Here's how it works. Each of Osborne's parabolic dishes focuses the sun on a Stirling engine. The heart of the power conversion unit is a Stirling engine, and the Stirling engine is a very simple, elegant, and efficient system that takes this intense heat from the sun. Uh, it heats a gas. In this case, we use hydrogen as the working uh, gas. And when you heat the gas, it expands, that pushes the piston down, that turns a crankshaft to turn a generator. By alternately heating and then cooling gas, the Stirling engine generates electricity with great efficiency. The uh, solar dish Stirling system, as we call it, or Suncatcher for short, is the world's most efficient uh, solar electric system out there. It's nearly two to three times more efficient than the conventional photovoltaic cell or other concentrating solar power. Actually, turning to renewables is nothing new. As Edison prepares for the solar plant, it is still using the state's oldest power plant. This is Mill Creek One, an Edison hydroelectric plant. It's been pumping electricity to Californians since 1893, and it's still in service more than 100 years later. Yeah, the plant's about 113 years old, and hopefully we can get another 100 years out of it. The original hydroelectric generator is still on display on the plant floor, alongside the turbine that replaced it in 1933. All those years, all that electricity, and all of it renewable. But up at the focal point, it's uh, 720 degrees Celsius, which is about 1,350 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's white hot when it's going. The Edison plant in the Mojave Desert won't be the only one. A twin solar plant is planned for the Imperial Valley, and its energy will be sold to San Diego Gas and Electric.
These are the world's largest solar projects. Each one by themselves combined, they're nearly two gigawatts. That's comparable in size to Hoover Dam, which is more than four billion kilowatt hours per year of electrical generation. The total, total electricity that's generated can power more than one million Southern California homes. It's, it's massive in scale. And Osborne says the reduction of greenhouse gases will be equally large. We offset more than four million tons of CO2 greenhouse gases per year. You've probably already wondered, what about nighttime when no electricity can be produced? Edison says it won't really be a problem. In California, our peak load is in the summer, and it's in the afternoons in the summer when a lot of your viewers are starting to turn on the air conditioners uh, and the like. And so solar in California has a very nice correlation with when our peak needs occur. So this is time-lapse photography where we compress about 12 hours into about 8 or 10 seconds. So the systems uh, wake up in the morning, they collect the sun, they track throughout the day into early afternoon at sunset, and then they retract, reset for the next day, and they continue again. Bruce Osborne believes Southern California's new solar plants could be just the start. But we have and can think about a larger scale. If you take 100 miles square, which is a big land, you know, chunk of land out in the desert, but still a fraction of the total percentage there, we can offset or eliminate all dependency on fossil fuels, whether it be gas, oil, uh, or coal. For the time being, Edison is still getting over 80% of its energy from traditional sources. Generators fired by natural gas, nuclear power from San Onofre, hydroelectric plants like Mill Creek One, and coal-powered plants. But the future will look very different. Edison is behind a major expansion of wind farms. And soon, with the completion of the world's largest solar power plant, with 10,000 mirrored dishes, we will finally be harnessing the most plentiful source of power we have, our own sun. I'm Roger Cooper for Life and Times.